Who might you be? Yeah, the name's Taffin, Mark Taffin. I'd like a word with you. So you really get to the core of Taffin in this scene <laughs> midway through the movie. Mr. Yeah. O'Rourke visits Taffin in his loft. O'Rourke uh, it needs Taffin's help to uh, make sure that the local sports field is protected from evil <laughs> Developers, developers, yeah. And that's the basic premise of the whole film. Yeah. Spoiler, Taffin spoiler alert. is found there. I mean, yeah, obviously, spoiler alert. Yeah. Even though I, I think with Taffin, <laughs> the concept is spoiled. somewhat moot. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to organise a committee to fight the building of that industrial monstrosity next to the sports field. The town needs jobs. But not from a chemical factory. It's likely to poison a lot of us. Oh. Chemical factory, is that what it is? The committee is trying to... We're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead because we need to start at the beginning. Sure. Where all stories begin, unless it's a Chris Nolan joint. Right. There's a scene here with the rock group asking for help. They've been sold a dodgy van, and the guy who sold it has heavies, so they can't do anything about it. And he basically says, you know, well, you're big lad, you can look after yourself. And they're like, oh, let's go, this guy's a waste of time. And as they walk off, you see them, and then you get this voiceover going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I won't help you. But I'll tell you what to do. And it's definitely not Brosnan's voice. Yes, I read that he <laughs> refused to do pickups and he refused to do ADR. Right. Because he wasn't happy with it. Mm. So I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah, you're right. There's, there's several bits yeah. where they've just not even tried. Nope. I wish it was that easy. He tells them to go to the dealership and say, ah, oh, it's a nice dealership you got here. Shame if it burnt down. Yeah. And then the guy gives in and gives them a new van. Well, they jump into a van and then away. they drive off it. And they drive past Taffin, who's watching the whole thing in his open-topped Taffin mobile with the shades on. <laughs> it is a Taffin mobile, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And they drive past and they lean out of the window, <laughs> punching the air, going, it worked! It bloody worked! <laughs> it worked! It bloody worked! Taffin smiles. He loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. So, yes, so we meet Alison Doody. I think she's called Charlotte. She's called Charlotte. Charlotte. And she is working for a Cockney man. Yeah. Les. Yes. He looks like a more heavyset Borat. He does. And he speaks with a, a studied insouciance that is typical to the criminal fraternity. Wow. So he sort of says everything. He's just not polite. He is not. That's how it's all just like, as well. oh, I don't care, you know. And he is a misogynist. Yeah. And he immediately sexually harasses Charlotte. Yeah. Puts his hand on her bottom, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. and says, oh, you know you like it. She protests that she doesn't like it. Stop, she says, and go play with yourself. Yeah. I'm working for you, that's all. Yeah. Liz, stop it and go play with yourself. I swear you won't go blind. Come on, love, you're mad for me, and you know it. I'm working for you, that's all. Les then re replies mysteriously, <laughs> Never mind that, concentrate on the books. <laughs> Never mind that, concentrate on the books. What does that mean? I don't know. He wants her to do more admin. I think so. Sexy admin. Maybe she's cooking his books sexily. Oh, right. He calls his willy his books. Yeah. Doctor, I've got a problem with the books. <laughs> um, sorry? Yeah, you know, uh, with the books. There's a little uh, difficulty with the books. They're cooked. What are you talking about? Mm, you know, the books. Uh, the old book. The book. The classic books. Have, can you have a look at my books? I don't know what you mean. I'm talking about my penis, my cock. My John Thomas, my fucking books. Have you ever heard anyone talk about their cock as their books before? No, I never have. <laughs> All right, well, you're a fucking monkey. Mon mon monkey muppet. Look at my fucking cock and call it the books. I'm never coming back here again. This has been a very humiliating experience. He then goes to see Mr. Flaherty. Mm, at the docks. At the docks. And we never explain... I mean, this is a scene to show that Taffin is known to be a, a, a disreputable person. Yes, this scene demonstrates the core of Taffin's conflict and frustration with the way his life has gone because he goes to visit Mr. Flat Flatty. Flat tits. Flat, yeah. Yeah. Who is a businessman. We can tell he's a businessman because even though he's standing in a shed that's just full of junk by the docks, <laughs> He's wearing a business suit. He is. That's where he conducts his business. Yeah. And he is uh, edgy because he doesn't want his employees seeing Taffin, this well-known roguish debt collector, mm. um, at his place of business. And Taffin hates that. He does. In Mr. Flaherty's office, Taffin mm. says, Mr. Flaherty, it seems to me that 
Cowardice is a terrible price to pay for respectability. Next time, collect it yourself. And he throws money in the man's chest. Yeah, he throws the brown envelope of money at Mr. Well, he's Flaherty. taking his 20% out, so it's fine. Uh-huh. Mr. Flaherty, it seems to me you're a little bit of a coward. But it becomes a motif in the film, the fact that Taffin hates being treated as if he's somehow shameful or embarrassing. Would you all mind not talking about me as if I wasn't here? Cut to yeah. the core, the main plot. Yeah. Q, main plot. Mm-hmm. Taffin is at a sports field mm. watching a game of football yeah. being played by some children. Yes. On a field. Yeah. And he doesn't have children and neither does his brother, I don't think. Don't think so, no. Don't but see he, any children. But still, he likes children. They're nice. He likes football. What's not to like? Let's go and watch the football game being played by the well, children. Well, Morris asks him to help to sort out this road problem. I mean, to explain there's a road problem, that they want to build a new road, and there's two fields, and they want to go through the sports field because no one knows who owns the other field. Yeah. So Mo wants him to sort it out, and he keeps asking, he keeps asking, and then Pierce goes, I heard you, Mo! That's right. Which is a great line. But Pierce Brosnan, when he shouts in this film, he sounds a bit like, he goes a bit like, Mr. Bean, I heard you, Mo! I've got a clip. Have you? Whether they know it or not, they need you. On their own, they got no chance. I heard you, Mo! <laughs> I heard you, Mo! <laughs> Aha, Jamal. It's almost a different language. It uh-huh. really is. It's like, Ajimole, 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 Ajimole. Aha, Jamal. Aha. So Taffin then watches some shady businessmen be shady mm. and then goes to meet Councillor Gibson at the pig auction and he knows that the new road is, as I explained, going through the sports field. There's another field called Railings Meadow, which they should use, but however, no one knows who owns it and this is the crux of Taffin's problem in this film. Yes. So this is Taffin talking to Councillor Gibson uh, and basically laying out the plot of the film. It would seem a great pity to tear up the town's sports field when you have this field sitting right beside it. There's precious few amenities besides the sports field and Father Donahue's sermon in this town. There's one thing you're overlooking, Mr. Taffin. That is that we don't know who owns Grayling's Meadow. I like the way that Brosnan says, uh, <laughs> it would seem a great pity to tear up the town's sports field when you have this field. <laughs> the stress should be on this, shouldn't it? Yeah. On this field. Yeah. Well, you got two fields. Don't tear up that field when you can tear up this field. But no, he decides to put the stress on the field. This is part of a running theme I found throughout this film, where I think the director has gone, Pierce, can we do another take of that? And he's gone, no, oh, fuck off. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to the ultimate rendition of that later. What the hell do you know? And then Charlotte tells Taffin her story. Yeah. And the the reason she's it, because we're all wondering, like, what's a clever, um, uh, attractive woman doing? working for a sleaze like Les in his books. Yeah. And Charlotte's story is that she met a pilot. Yep. She was on a plane flying back from Oslo mm. because she's got a bit of an accent. All over the place. Yeah. 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 She met the pilot of the plane <laughs> <laughs> on the plane from Oslo. She got to know the pilot and they got on really well. I just wanted to say, I think you drove the plane really well from Oslo. <laughs> Thanks, mm. love. Thanks very much. Would you like to drive around Ireland for a while on a holiday? Yes, please. So that's what they do. But on the holiday, they have an argument. And then after the argument, the pilot drives off with her stuff and she doesn't have any more stuff and she's broke. And um, the incident was witnessed by Les, the bar owner, who gives Charlotte a job because she was broke and she felt she had to take the job because she was broke. Uh, To which Taffin says... Cemeteries are full of girls who took it because they were broke. Cemeteries and marriages. Which is quite a deep bit of wisdom. Cemeteries and marriages full of girls who took it because they were broke. Amusement parks and petrol stations. They're full of girls who took it because they were broke. As the sandwiches and sharks. They're full of they're full of girls who took it because they were broke. I mean you could you could say yeah. almost anything. Yeah. Thermos flasks <laughs> and amusement parks are full of girls who took it because they were broke. It's true, isn't it? It's yeah. When you think about it. It's, so he goes to see Mr. Henderson, who we found out owns that other field. Mm. And he shoots at him. He does. Mr. H- Mr. Henderson shoots at him. Yeah. He's very cross. And and Taffin um, says... Listen, listen, this is just business, Mr. Henderson. 
That's Mr. Henderson. That's Mr. Henderson. It sounds as if someone's been shot and wounded there. Yes, he does. But that's just Mr. Henderson running, um, trying to scare off Taffin by going. <laughs> that is how you scare off a Taffin. Yeah. It's in a book. I would be scared. Yeah, I would be terrified. Um, so then Taffin follows Henderson. He basically suspects Henderson is crooked. So he follows him, and we see Henderson having a meeting with Mr. Gibson from earlier, who I should have pointed out has got a very nice cravat. Mm, that's how you know... And he smokes a pipe. He smokes a pipe only in his own time. When he's on council business, mm. he looks more the everyman. He does. But deep down, what, we, what ordinary people don't know about Councillor Gibson is that he's a fucking cravat-wearing sports jacket guy. Driver's gloves, I bet. So, yeah, then Taffin... Uh, Mr Gibson arrives home to find Taffin telling a joke to his wife... Hobnobbing with Valerie. Yeah. But he, he, what I love about this is he insists on finishing the joke. Yeah. <laughs> and the way he delivers the joke, which you can't do, right? He says, anyway, and then the fella said, what will you be wanting with three of them? And the other fella said, ask your wife. And then as she starts laughing, he goes, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> As if to say, that's funny, isn't it? Anyway, to finish the story, this fellow says, what would you be wanting with the three of them? And my friend says, ask your wife. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? So you get to the other side. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So then, he, um, then we go back to Henderson and uh, Todd Unctious, Taffin's friends, trying to talk to him again in the same position Taffin was in where he's shooting at him. And Mr H Henderson says, get off my land and stay off, you dirty fucker. You get off my land and stay off, you dirty fucker. You dirty fucker. <laughs> Much better. That's good, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. there's, that, again, another strike for the 18 rating. Yeah. But that's a good bit of delivery from Mr. Henderson. It would only be better if he was attending to his books at this point <laughs> while he said yeah. it. <laughs> You're dirty. That's what he calls it. Yeah. Les calls it his books. Yeah. Henderson calls it his dirty fucker. <laughs> Doctor, I'd like you to take a look at my dirty fucker. Well, <laughs> what seems to be the... Pro I don't... What? What did you say? My dirty fucker! You know what I'm talking about. Take a look at it. It's sore. <laughs> it's what? What are you talking about? My penis! Haven't you ever heard it called the dirty fucker before? <laughs> no, I never have. <laughs> Could you keep your voice down? But then they bully Mr. Henderson. Yeah. Because he then decides, after getting rid of Taffin's friend, he's going to go for to the toilet. His outside... He's got an outside loo. Thunderbox, yeah. Yeah, his thunderbox, indeed. And then Taffin turns up and starts knocking on the door and trying to wind him up. <laughs> and then um, he basically says to him, look, the deal's off, but you're going to have to sell the meadow and we're going to talk to the council and we're going to get the cheapest rate possible. That's right. Just to make him really angry. Out of the goodness of your heart, I want you to contact the council and tell them that you own Greylings Meadow and that you'll sell it to them at the best price they can afford. Have you got that now? Out of the goodness of my heart! Why, you threaten me, you bastard! And Henderson leaves the toilet, and then they blow it up. They blow it up with, with a an RC car controller. Yes. <laughs> it's clearly a remote control yeah. for a car, yeah. for a little car. And so then Brosnan... Oh, yeah, here we go, look. So this is O'Rourke in Taffin's sexy loft mm. trying to convince Taffin to help the local community out and do something about these evil chemical refinery developers and saying, you know, whatever happened to you, Taffin? You had so much promise back in the seminary. You were the guy that asked questions when everyone else just wrote down what they thought was the answer. You were the one who was actually thinking for himself and... Look what you've come to. You're just a debt-collecting man. Taffin doesn't like hearing that. And um, so this is what he says. Yes, well, the people of Gambia will survive without my services. Oh, I'm sorry. They'll never know what they missed. How about you? I'm doing what I can, you know. I'm doing what I can, you know. <laughs> I'm doing what I can, you know. He fucking just has fun with a line, Brosnan. I mean, the only other actor that really comes close is Nick Cage. Yeah. As far as exploring the possibilities of a piece of dialogue. But is there any chance that Nick Cage would be more likely to... Uh, no, do it no, it would be even worse. He'd really mad. He'd do it like a, with a mouthful of marbles, wouldn't he? Yeah, it'd be amazing. He'd do that double flip they did on Wogan and throw money at everybody. Welcome, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. 
How are you doing? <laughs> well, under, oh. understatement's the watchword tonight. Oh, my, hang on. They're talking about going for a Chinese, aren't they? But they never make it because no. they get absolutely beaten A up. flatbed lorry turns up. And some yobs jump out. Shh. Heavies. Not half. And he gets really a bad beating. And yeah. the, the great thing, obviously, about the beating is that then Taffin must retire to his loft mm. with his shirt open. Doing some weights. To do some weights, and he has to put on sunglasses to cover up his bruises. <sighs> yeah. Meaning that he is ready to deliver one of the all-time great lines mm -hmm. in an argument that he then has with Charlotte. Yes. Because Charlotte is te telling him at this point, look, this has gone too far. You're getting beaten up. We didn't even have Chinese, and they beat you up. So you should walk away from this whole And situation. Morris tells him to as well. Right. Everyone yeah. is telling him, like, come on, this is crazy. Mm. Walk away. But Taffin, no. He doesn't want to see that chemical plant built. Mm. There's no way he's walking. He's a man of principle. And she says, um, well, we know what she says. Here's the moment. What is this, some crappy macho prerogative? A topic women can't discuss? What goes on in this town is none of your business. As long as I'm living here, it is. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! Well, that's easily fixed. <laughs> Was that really the best take? Really? <laughs> Honestly? Yes. If you were the director, would you have thought, Perfect print. Definitely. No, he goes on for about 10 seconds too long. It's great. It's f totally left field because he's <laughs> thinking there's so much in that line. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! Uh, so the baddies come into the pub and start to cause trouble. But the thing that struck me about this scene is that they ask for three pints and it's £3.96. For three pints. I mean, they're probably watered down. Probably. It's uh, a dodgy pub. It's, it's really... Uh, I wouldn't want to go there. They go in the pub yes. and they get intimidated and they all go to the toilet together. Yep. And the baddies come in and one of them starts weeing on one of them, right? That's right. And Patrick Bergen says this line when he sees a man weeing on another man yeah. in a hostile manner. Wait a minute. You can't do that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't do that. You can't do what? Leave it, Mo. I thought that's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's not really. That's before Patrick Bergen is punched and he slumps down into the urinal, yeah. resting his head on on the um, pee pee ceramic surface, the pee pee soaked ceramic surface. It's not nice. At least the, those mints didn't go in his eyes or something. I can't change the world that we live in. So they want Taffin now to sort out the baddies. And he's a bit pissed off about it because he's done his bit. Yeah, it's and back to the docks. Yeah, he says, you know, this this can only go one way. And he said, oh, for God's sake, don't kill anyone. No, killing, for God's sake. And then he gives this whole amazing speech about a punched eye, fine. A broken nose, not, not a problem. Yeah. Slit throat, all right, no worries. Oh, no killing. Right. So what will square with your conscience? A little arm twisting? Yes? A knee in the groin? All right. A broken nose? If I must. But it grows, doesn't it? Ruptured spleen, torn arteries, razor cuts. All right, that's enough. He runs through all the possible violent scenarios. Yeah. We're asking you for help, Mark. My help has consequences. My help <laughs> has consequences. My help... <laughs> Has consequences. Let's try that again. My help has consequences. <laughs> My help. Again, having fun with the lines. Say it, damn you. So the baddies notice Taffin is in the club and uh, they go to make a phone call to grass on him and Todd comes out with a sawn-off shotgun and takes two of the baddies' baddies and throws them into the rock band's van. The rock band reappear. Yeah. That wasn't just a random scene. No. No. Oh. That's not what... This, this film... It was, was like a, a foreshadowing. Yeah. This film is like a beautiful Swiss clock. Joseph Campbell saw this film and said, fucking hell. Yeah. Bundle the baddies into the back of the van and pour petrol on them. Yeah, he tells one of them to light a cigarette. Then exactly. he puts them in and the other goes, put the cigarette out, I'm covered in petrol. Yeah. Dangerous. Plus, you shouldn't smoke. Put that out, you crazy bastard! They poured petrol all over me! Have you not seen it? Emphysema? Have you, have you not looked at the back of the packets? They have that chat, I imagine, on the way to the, yeah. the woods. Ah, it's okay. I got the guy who's just got impotence. I don't really care about that. But what about the fellow with the great thing growing out of his neck? Ah, that's okay too. He just looks silly. So Taffin comes out, and the baddie in the trench coat's there, and he gets in his car, and the guy goes, I want to talk to you. And then Taffin goes, is that your car? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I thought so. And then he drives into it to get him to chase him. Yes. Is that your motor over there? Yeah. I thought so. 
and he hates it. He, he loves his car, obviously, the, the baddie. So he certainly does chase Taffin. And then they have a punch-up, and Taffin knocks him out with a big punch, and they just leave him in the woods. And then they get the other baddies that they covered in petrol, and they chuck him in a river. Yeah. I don't know what's accomplished by doing this. Well, they humiliated them, didn't they? These guys are just going to come back. I mean, have they seemed at any point in this film to sort of let things lie? I think, though, once you've been chucked in a in a shallow pond, hmm. you pretty much know it's over. Do you think? Yeah, I yeah. would think you'd get home, you'd be all wet, there'd mm. be some grass on you, and you'd think, fucking hell, what am I doing with my life? But at this point, it needed a, like a fight with a ninja or something, didn't it? Yeah. To spice it up a little bit. Taffin could have beaten that guy, and then suddenly out of the shed, a ninja goes, what the... <laughs> <laughs> he has to fight him. That would have been really good. It would have made it worth seeing. <laughs> One moment, please. Many a martyrs died because of a league of farce. And we instantly find out after calling the hitman that Martin's house, has, Mr. Martin's house, yep. has burned down. And everybody is, for him and Valerie, are dead. And of course, everyone thinks it was Taffin. And he says, they think I did this. And he drives off. Um, back to Taffin's loft. Well, Charlotte asked reasonably i think why he doesn't use the confession that he got out of mr martin to which taffin replies you could nail sprawly you know you could for what for bribing a bunch of never count greedy non-entities there's no proof that he killed martin there never will be bastards like sprawly get other people to do their dirty work for them their dirty work dirty i love the way he said dirty dirty work He just likes to pay the occasional visit to Ireland. Yes, he does. With his accent. He does, bless him. So then, Sproly, he gets a phone call from the hitman. Drives out to meet Deacon. Yeah. But Mm. Deacon isn't there. That's right. Taffin is. Taffin. Um, Yeah, and then he says, clear my name or I'll kill you. And then he kills him. And then he immediately kills him. Yeah. Cut to. Yeah. Final scene. And what a scene it is. What a scene. The bus station. Yeah. Where Charlotte is waiting to board a bus for pastures new. She's standing in the queue for the bus Mm. when someone shoves her from behind. Yeah. She tries to ignore it at first, but Mm. then it happens again. Mm. Shove. And she's furious. She Mm. spins around to confront the shover. Guess who it is? Hmm. It's not Taffin, is it? Yes, it is. Good grief. Be cool, Charlotte. Be cool. Well, there you go, that's Taffin, we did it. We did it, wow. We got there in the end. I think, is this podcast even longer than Taffin? <laughs> it might be. Smash Pop.